Hello and good evening to you. Welcome to News 360's Lab News up here at Adesawe in Kanda. My name is Alfred Okansi. I'm Natalie Fort. A look at the top stories this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paid, GT Bank, and Piccadilly Biscuits. University of Ghana students begin campaign for improved security after robbery attacks. Eight persons believed to be leaders of a group pushing to declare voter region as an independent state granted bail. Also ahead this evening, Attorney General files transcripts of leaked recordings of NDC chairman's comments with forensic analysis of the audio tape in court. Also on the continent, the, the fuel tanker lorry overturns and explodes near the airport in Niger's capital, Niamey, killing at least 58 people. Stay with us here on News 360. We've got the details of these and much more news. You can watch us on 3news.com and TV3 Ghana on Facebook. So we're live on DSTV channel 279. Feel free to share your thoughts with us. So it's as we get live and interactive. To our first story this evening, the Attorney General has filed transcripts of leaked recordings of NDC's chairman uh, comments that has resulted in his prosecution along with forensic analysis of the audio tape and a Kra High Court hearing. The case was forced to adjourn sitting because the Attorney General filed the statements together with four other documents Monday morning. The Director of Public Prosecution, Yvonne Atakura Obobisa, addressing Justice Samuel Asiedu, noted the state filed the documents Monday morning because of few delays. Among the documents filed are the investigation caution statements of the accused persons, the charge statements, a compact disc, recording of the set tape, a forensic report, as well as transcript of the audio recordings in question. The DPP, however, was quick to add the defense lawyers were yet to be served. The Attorney General had three weeks to serve those documents on the defense. Um, they, they didn't file uh, until this morning, and the documents had not been served on us as at the time that we were in court. As a result of that matter, the uh, court could not proceed to, I mean, uh, to, to hear the matter today. Lawyer for the second accused person, Kweku Bwahim, Dr. Abdul Basid Bamba, indicated he has filed a document at the registry of the court as of May 3, 2019, showing that his client was not present at the NDC national headquarters on the said day. He was not present at the meeting, the subject matter of this prosecution. And the court will also be looking into that matter at the next agenda on the 27th of May, um, 2019. The two, Samuel Ofosu Ampofu, the NDC national chairman, Kweku Bwahin, Deputy Communications Director of the NDC were charged for conspiracy to cause harm and assault against a public officer following a leaked audio tape which allegedly revealed of a plan to orchestrate electoral violence. And eight persons believed to be the leaders of a group called Homeland Study Group Foundation have been arrested. The group aimed at seceding from, Gov from Ghana to declare an independent country called Western Togoland. The arrest was made Sunday, May 5, in the course of a meeting to finalize arrangements to declare independent Western Togoland on May 9, 2019. The arrest was made by a team of intelligence agencies, including the police and the military. Items including a constitution, national emblem, and anthem prepared by the group for their proposed country. It was also alleged that the group has illegally recruited and trained militia re ready to form the core of their proposed country's army and police forces. A statement signed by an assistant superintendent at the Police Public Affairs Department's AS. P. Simon Tenku urged the public to report any suspicion or wrongdoing to police for action.
Now, the Ghana Education Service has suspended the three months payment policy for all teachers across the country. Under the policy, teachers who have worked for more than three years are only paid three months and the rest validated. General Secretary of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, Nat, who spoke with the correspondent Daniel Opoku, is saying that the suspension will halt the payment of salary arrears. The three months payment policy was introduced in 2013 for workers in the public sector. Under the policy, those who have worked for more than three years are only paid three months. Various teachers agitated for the policy to be scrapped, but yielded no results. The situation created huge arrears payments for more than 20,000 teachers nationwide. After discussions with the Ghana Education Service, it has suspended the three months payment policy. This, the General Secretary of NAT, David Foray Champon, has lauded GES for the bold decision. We have suspended as well GES staff is concerned. We have negotiated for it, and the minister has been very good at working with the Minister of Finance. They have at least put GES staff away from that policy so that if you are recruited in September and you have eight months salary arrears pending, when everything goes through and you are cleared and verified, it is paid off to you. He again emphasized on new initiatives to pay arrears old teachers. We are only praying that something is done about the system so that at least it can move quickly for them. But so far as the Ghana Education Service is concerned, they have done almost everything. Anybody who has arrears, either it's promotion or recruitment arrears, it has been down, up, uh, uploaded onto the system, waiting for connectivity to transfer into the HMIS. I think that is where the challenge is. President of Nagra Tenji Kabonu, however, requested those involved to pay the arrears. Myself and my officers will sit down, appraise the situation, and issue a statement on the arrears. The President of the Republic, Nana Kufuado, promised us that by the end of March, all arrears will be paid. Unfortunately, we are at the end of April. We are almost getting half, half, almost maybe the arrear, all the arrears have not been paid. Two teacher unions have asked governments through the Ghana Education Service to set up a team that will disburse the amount released as incentive package for teachers in senior high schools. The Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, and the National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRAT, are confident that this would help improve their situation and reduce simmering agitations among some schools. The 80% incentive announced for teachers in senior high schools are currently creating problems. In some of the senior high schools, teachers and their various heads are at each other's throats over the amount to be shared. The Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, said its computations indicate that some teachers will be receiving 600 Ghana cities, while others will be receiving less the amount which it believes could trigger problems. General Secretary of the Association, David Ofore Champon, has asked the GAS to create teams to resolve these agitations. I've had a conversation with some people and uh, the, the figure is hovering around 600 Ghana cities and it's almost cutting across everywhere, which I believe is the right thing. But like I tell you every day, we don't live in heaven, so you don't have, expect a perfect situation. There might be some heads or some bezes somewhere who may want to play some games with the disbursement. Mm -hmm. But what is important is that the teachers must know the formula for the disbursement so that nobody cheats them. President of the National Association of Graduate Teachers, Nagra, NJ Kabonu, rather requested that the GES should involve the unions in disbursing the amount. Is it fair to let the kitchen staff share the money at the same, at the, uh, the same quantum with some other administrative staff? I don't think so because the kitchen staff are in the kitchen by the fire throughout. Is it also fair that someone who is doing his own normal duty like uh, a non-teaching staff to get more than the teacher who does the work? Or is it also fair that, I mean, so there are ways to look at it, look taking the school setting. However, some of the teachers in the various senior high schools have raised concerns about the 10% withholding tax. But NAT and NAGRAT have called on these teachers to remain calm until all issues are addressed.
This is supposed to be an intervention to motivate people to work. Why do you take 20%? That is way too much. So let's let's have a discussion. And the discussion brought it to 10%. Mm. So but it is legitimate that if you earn allowance, you must pay tax on it. I will ask our members to keep calm. And uh, I will advise them not to uh, get too worked up. This is the beginning of it. And we expect that um, uh, we'll repair the challenges as we go on. Uh, President Kofuado has charged African leaders to prioritize the creation of a peaceful atmosphere to ensure the African youth becomes part of the process at creating a peaceful world. The President was speaking at the launch of the Global Peace Intergenerational Dialogue in Accra. The Global Peace Intergenerational Dialogue is expected to set the tone for a global discussion amongst young future leaders captains of industry and city mayors, as well as civil society, deliberate on their aspirations. Global Peace is an initiative led from the Global South and Africa and is at the forefront of building a new discourse and narrative on global issues. Ghana is the first country from Africa and the Global South to host the Made in Dialogue. Chair of the Board of Trustees of the African Center for Constructive Resolution to dispute and global peace, Grasa Michel charged young people to take charge of the future and ensure Africa becomes peaceful and free of poverty. Should you also not take your voices to the African Union and call our leaders to end the mindless wars and the conflicts on our continent? When we talk about technology making a difference in our lives, as it would, should you young people not be thinking how you will use your technology skills to end the root causes of conflict, which are poverty, unemployment, inequality. President Ikufuado stressed the importance of equipping the youth with skills to ensure a guaranteed future. We cannot talk about shaping the future without talking about the welfare and well-being of young people. It is important that we take these ideas forward to harness the value of a youthful population, holding human rights, gender equality, development of human capital, and dignity at the center of all our investments. Only by providing opportunities that open the future to all young people do we fashion a brighter future. Throughout 2019, Global Peace will convene a series of intergenerational dialogues that will be held in a minimum of 100 cities across the world. Now, today, the holy month of Ramadan began for Muslims across the globe. Islamic faithful are expected to abstain from food and drinks from sunrise till sunset. But what are the other things that Muslims are required to abstain from within this period? Aisha Yakubu has more in the following report. Ramadan is a famous month-long fast among worshippers of Islamic faith. The month traditionally begins with the sighting of the new moon, marking the start of the ninth month in the Islamic calendar. The aim is to increase spirituality and religious observance through longer prayers and self-control as Ramadan is seen as an opportunity to replenish one's spirituality. A walk through one popular Muslim community in Accra, Nima, showed people going about the activities in a very calm manner. Dates are found in most places as it is believed eating them before and after the fast carry a lot of spiritual value. The period of fasting does not only require Muslims to keep away from food and drinks from dusk till dawn. According to Islamic cleric Sheikh Ibrahim Ibn Sana, the period is also to learn self-control and stay away from social vices. You don't think that you just abstain from food and drink, you can insult people, you abstain from food and drink, you can fight. You have stayed from food and drink. You can postpone a, neg a negative act by telling the person, you wait, I am fasting. Let me break my fast in the evening and you see what I will do to you. And then also the other misconception is that they see Ramadan to be a banter, a boxing fight. 
So in the dawn, you hear people, tim, 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 tim. They are pounding for food. They are as if it is a war. Fasting is an act of worship. During this month, people of different faith like to join Muslims to observe the fast for various reasons. Sheikh Ibrahim believes fasting during Ramadan by a non-believer of Islam carries no spiritual value. You can't say that I'm a Christian. Well, I want to join the Muslims. Do you believe in the principle? Do you accept that it's a pillar of faith? Do you accept that it's mandated by God? If yes, then you are a Muslim and you believe. But if you want to join in on the physical level, not the spiritual level, as a form of exercise, then you can do it. You only get physical benefits, not the spiritual one, if you're a Christian. Other acts of worship, such as prayer, reading the Quran, and charity are also encouraged during the holy month. The last 10 nights of Ramadan, which is known as Laylatul Qadr, is said to be the most important of the whole month. It is believed to be one of those nights that the Holy Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad. Ramadan ends when the first crescent of the new moon is sighted again, marking the new lunar month starts. This is to make way for Eid al-Fitr festivities. I like that fufu battle bit that he talked about, the tum tum tum. You know, that's a very, very normal feature with this period. But on MTN Video Report uh, this evening, citizen journalist Abdullah Emanuel is urging government to complete the One Village, One Dam project at Binda in the North Region. This is the policy the government of the Republic has promised to do which is one village, one dam pro program. It has started taking place at Binda uh, in the Nanumba South District. And we are pleading with the government to take it seriously to complete this project. If these projects have been fulfilled, everybody in the community, I mean the residents in the community are all happy about this policy. This is Citizen General Abdullah Emmanuel at Binda. Well, you can also send your video report via WhatsApp number 055-1433044. Do stay with us here on News 360. We've got business news coming up with Park Wissi Asari shortly. Hello, good evening. My name is Park Yasari. Welcome to the business news segment on News 360. Now, the Office of the Chief Justice has created a special court for the National Pension Regulatory Authority to begin prosecuting employers who, def who default in the payments of Tier 2 pension contributions. The NPRA urged employees to report defaulting employee employers so the authority can clean up the system and ensure the right protection mechanism for workers. The National Pension Act 2008, Act 766, mandated the establishment of a new contributory three-tier pension scheme with the National Pensions Regulatory Authority to oversee the efficient administration of the composite pension schemes. The first year is the basic National Social Security Scheme for all workers in Ghana. It is a defined benefit scheme and mandatory for workers to have 13.5% contributions made on their behalf. The contribution is managed by the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SINIT. The second tier is a defined contributory occupational pension scheme mandatory for workers with 5% contribution made on behalf of members. The contribution is managed privately by approved trustees, whereas the third tier, which includes all provident funds and all other pension funds outside tiers 1 and 2, is a voluntary scheme. Board Chairman of the Authority, Paul Simon Corantin, in an interview with TV3, said the new legislative instrument was timely because a significant number of employers have failed to pay the Tier 2 pension contributions. Even though um, there were sanctions imposed uh, in the law for those who failed to pay the mandatory uh, Tier 2 pensions, there were not actually uh, uh, provisions were not made for who will actually do the prosecution. 
According to the NPRA, its compliance officers will soon sue upon employers to demand evidence of Tier 2 pension contribution payments. He added, if they are unable to provide the required documents, this will give the NPRA a reasonable cause to prosecute. For example, 13 uh, and a half percent, which should go towards the Tier 1, the 5 percent, which should also mandatorily be uh, transferred to private uh, administrators to also invest on behalf of the employee. And the law says that if you fail to remit that on a monthly basis, then you commit a criminal offense. To initiate the process, the authority has already trained a number of judges and prosecutors to begin implementing the new judicial enforcement process. The intended prosecutions are expected to begin during the second half of 2019. So away from pensions, Infinix has launched uh, its latest addition to its S series, the Infinix X4. The phone promises to be a major market competitor with a 32 megapixel front facing camera, Africa's highest pixel for selfies. My colleague Noam Fallon has the following report. The S series by Infinix is focused on the selfie taking audience. Other specs of Infinix X4 will shake up the very competitive smartphone market. Infinix X4 features a beautiful 6.2-inch HD display with a resolution of 720 by 1,500 pixels with 2.5D glass covering on both the front and rear of the phone. On the front, you get minimum bezels plus a new water drop notch for maximum screen experience. On the back of the phone is a square fingerprint reader. Infinix is uh, seven years old. But, uh, we have achieved a lot. We covered more than 30 countries all over the world, including India, Indonesia, Morocco, Ghana. The Infinix S4 is also the first device from Infinix to have Android 9.0 right out of box. The AI camera of S4 can detect eight things, whether you are taking in portrait, whether you are taking at night, whether you are taking with the backlight, it can detect your environment and adjust the light conditions to make your photos clearer. Also, the AI 3D beauty can screen 18 beauty packages, like make your eyes big, your skin more delicate, your chin more solid, your lips more sexy. Infinix's latest S4 pushes the boundaries on specs versus price. At just 799 Ghana cities, consumers can get 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes of onboard storage expandable to 128 gigabytes via micro SD for 1,049 Ghana cities. Under the tagline, empower the infinity in you. All right, another news. Tourniful Enterprise has been presented with a Kia K2 700 van after being adjudged the overall national best distributor of Promacido products for 2018. The award ceremony by the Promacido Ghana, producers of Cowbell, Mexi, Onga, Yamveta, among others, was to acknowledge the contributions of distributors towards the growth of the company. Promacido Ghana celebrated its 20 years of service to its distributors. 69 awardees took home prizes including a van, citations and cash. The commercial director of Promacido, Samuel Sadao, promised the company will continue to produce, distribute and market quality range of products to millions of consumers. Our, our focus is deliver quality food product. So in all the category that we have product, we want to be the number one in each category. This is our expectation. But to do that, we should have a strong network and strong partner. It's why tonight we are rewarding our partners. And also part of this meeting and this night is also to share what are our expectations and what are the expectations of our partners to build something strong together. The managing director of Promacido Ghana, Festos Tete, acknowledged the immeasurable contributions of the distributors in the value chain. Without our partners in the value chain, we are unable to reach them. They are the conduit through which we reach our consumers and they are very critical to what we do. And for all the efforts they supported us with in 2018, we wanted to take today specially, also on the occasion that we are 20 years in, in, in Ghana. Uh, to appreciate and reward performance of our distributors. Jatrad Enterprise placed third and was presented with a cash prize of 30,000 Ghana cities. 
Matima Enterprise came second and was presented with a cash prize of 50,000 Ghana cities. Tony Fell Enterprise was adjudged the overall national best distributor for 2018 and was presented with a KRK2 700 van. We're so happy, very happy and proud to be the winner for 2018. Well, seven years in Pomacido has not been easy, but we have managed to get through to this far. And we give all the glory to God. Promacido Ghana is a leading provider of high quality food products, offering goods that are economical but of excellent quality across its extensive product wing. For the very latest in business news, for more business news stories, you can log on to our website www.3news.com. My name is Park Kusiasari. Over to you, Alfred. I will say thank you with business. Now, some university students, the University of Ghana students specifically, have called for improved security on the campus and other university campuses to protect life and property. This follows a robbery attack on one of the, the students of the University of Ghana Legon along the Pentagon James Top Nelson Yanka Hall Road. Now, we, we're going to get some details on that. We're working on it to have a fair idea of what's happening on campus. Now. But Adam Bona is a security analyst. He joins me via Skype this evening. It's a very worrying trend, Mr. Bona, if uh, you observe. This is not the first time. In fact, this case is not a case in isolation. Now, what would you have expected the university authorities have done, at least, to prevent this situation which has left a student with deep machete wounds uh, receiving treatment at the 37 military hospital now. Good evening, Alfred. Yes, I think uh, I'm not sure if the university authorities today are doing wide stakeholder uh, consultation. I'm saying this because, uh, uh, you know, I have had uh, some working relationship in the past with the University of Ghana. Uh, you know, when Professor Yanka was there, Nibu Etego and Prof. Ayite and, and co. And, and so I'm surprised that uh, these things are happening because then during Prof. Yanka's time when he was a pro vice chancellor, uh, a lot of things went in. They were, I, you know, did a lot of consultation for them, did a lot of work for that campus. A strategic, you know, security document was done and uh, largely implemented. And that brought down you know, crime rate on that campus. They implemented the stop and search where miscreants, I mean, the university's own security guards, you know, if uh, the retired ACP, uh, Amadou, who is to be the head of security, I mean, they implemented that strategy, stop and search, where people who were not students were stopped and searched. Sometimes even students uh, sometimes were searched if they believe that you have done something on toward. And so, Maybe all these things are not being done. And now the campus is so big. Looking at the size of the campus now, it means that, that if they, maybe they aren't using that strategy or that policy document. Or they need mm -hmm. to improve it if they, are not, if, if, if they have it at all. Or else then these things wouldn't stop Alfred. Well, but Mr. Bernard, even beyond uh, improving the security, there are some basic things like street light on campus, which is not working. And it's not peculiar to the University of Ghana alone. I mean, if you look... Street light, not a security matter, is it? Well, street light is a security matter. If you, you, I mean, just like you said, it's very basic. The truth is that uh, the university is now, uh, you know, so big. There are a lot of private hostels and students are everywhere. And remember the age range. Students, you know, we have more younger people going to the investors. Some of them would have left home. The first time they had freedom was on a campus like University of Ghana. Public education is in there. They need to make sure street lights are working. And so you need the head of security. I don't know if the head of security, maybe, I mean, I haven't, you know, had any relation with them for a while. And so I wouldn't want to delve into uh, what the head of security isn't doing right. But I'm tempted to believe that if the head of security is on top of his job, these are things we'll report because, uh, you know, usually they would have someone at the level of a professor I know Professor Senyana, what I mean, I can't remember the name, used to be, uh, you know, on their council who advised in terms of security. 
And, and so if street lights are not working, how much does it cost? Maybe 20 CDs and a bulb is changed. If they need to put street lights, they should do that. But unfortunately, if these things are not done or they are not reported, then you are going to have the situation we have. Public education is very important. Some, some of these students would leave their hostels or leave their place of residence and want to go to. You know university, anyone who knows university uh, Ghana. Uh, absolutely. And it happens during the time when we're, they're writing examinations. You know, the students want to go to areas to go and study at night. Exactly. They want to go to areas to go and study. And so in the past, what I know was done was that when students, when it was getting to time for examination or examination mm -hmm. was in place, security heightened because then students are, you are going to have student activities 24-7 and therefore security personnel deployed were doing a lot of, you know, movements, getting, moving from one location to the other. But today, I, I am tempted to believe they have to do a lot more, increasing the students, you know, security guard ratio, increasing it a lot more better or else these things aren't going to end, Alfred. And mm -hmm. so as far as I'm concerned, University of Ghana in the past have been able to do this. And fortunately for the vice chancellors and mm -hmm. university authorities all over the country, Prof. Yanka has done this at the University of Ghana. So they should consult him if they need any assistance. I think he's done it. And he did it so well. I mean, right. some of us assisted him to do it. Mr. Bernard, I want to thank you very much for your time this evening. Extremely grateful. Now, we understand that one person has been arrested, according to ACP, Kwasi Fori, who's the Director of Operations of the Accra Regional Police Command. We're keeping an eye on this to bring you a lot more details on it as we go on in the bulletin. But stay with us. We'll Well, welcome back. Let's go to live now to the University of Ghana campus where we understand security has been beefed up after that armed uh, robbery attack on one of the students that's currently at the 37 military hospital receiving treatment. Adwa Dubio also is there now. Okay. I am currently on the Ivandi Pentagon stretch here in the University of Ghana where you'd realize that the street is actually very dark. This is where some unidentified men attacked a final year student of the University of Ghana and inflicted machete wounds on his head, leg, and hands. The streets are still not lit, even after the university instituted some measures like ensuring that the streets is lit to ensure that the students here are safe. I currently have some students here who are going to tell me whether the measures that the university have instituted has actually restored some sense of security among them. Your name, please. Can you come to your Your name? Um, my name is um, John Texan. John Texan, what yes, can you please. tell us about the security situation here on campus? Yeah, the security situation here on campus um, is actually nothing to write home about. I think uh, at the beginning of the semester, measures, security measures uh, have been, were put in place by the school authorities. And then just at the beginning of the semester, someone was murdered uh, closer to the school gates. And we were, they were like, oh, they, they, are going to, they are going to improve on, uh, upon the security measures and all. For our various halls, the security measures are good. They check those going in and coming out. But then uh, the streets, our streets where we, we bypass during late hours, some of the some of the students, like exam week like this, some of the students need to get to the BAM library to go and study. And when they are coming back to their various hostels uh, as late hours, and we don't have street lights around, and then some of the security men who are the very far ends of the streets, when we are coming and the place is also very dark and there's a lot of bushes around, uh, those uh, unidentified men come out of the bushes and attack some of the students and hurt them. This, this incident is not actually the second or the uh, or it's going to be the, I'm not sure it's going to be the, the last because... But now that the university has instituted measures to ensure... Well, th this is how dark the place is after this incident yesterday. Clearly, a very worrying development there. We'll keep an eye on this. Joy to be also bringing us a live update of what's happening on campus. But you still stay with us here on TV3. In our subsequent bulletins, we'll go back there and give you some more details. Back shortly. 
All right, so it's now time for some entertainment and lifestyle news with me, Nana Kwejordan. Starting off, fast rising comedian General Ntatia is admired by many for his creative jokes delivered in a stammering speech. Now, for a lot of people, he's exciting to watch, but others see his style as making mockery of stammerers. The comedian thinks that is a wrong impression. He spoke to Uzurai. I will not put anything in place, but I will pray for the city. Please, shall we pray? Oh, God, good evening. God, this evening, I bring the city in front of you. Ah, how many heads do we have on the dollar? Only one. And how many heads do we have on the city? Six heads. Ah, how can one head compete against six heads? But at this evening, we take one head from the city and we match it against the one head on the dollar. The remaining five rise up, oh. The remaining five rise up, oh. The remaining five rise up, oh. Ejelan Tatia is a young, funny guy who always thinks that um, people should be able to laugh and, you know, f so that you'll be able to forget your problems and all that. So we find the possible ways of making people laugh because, you know, having problems and the heat in Ghana and the sun and all that scorching through, if you don't take a smoke, will come out from your ears. So we have to laugh. <laughs> Discovered in 2014, the situational comedian General Intatia has made huge strides and is now a force to reckon with. Featuring in TV comedy series, MTN Yellow Cafe further endeared him to comedy enthusiasts. It was after that that people were like, oh, okay, this guy is funny. And they started looking up for me. They started looking at, oh, okay, Dylan Tati, yeah, let's follow him. But then I was using Rufus. So it was after Rufus, people started knowing the name. And then I shot Calibos in China. And then I was like, okay, let's pick up a name. And then we started. So the name general was like, Okay, this guy can play multiple roles. He can stammer. When it comes to serious role, he can do it. When it comes to role that people will not, you know, think that he's different, he's able to pick it up and do it. So, general, like all over. Yeah. And then the aunt is very wise. So, in Tatia, if you go to the Bible, so like, general, someone who is general and is very wise. Right, so <laughs> the first rising the comedian is remembered for his popular joke, Prayer for the City. Why are you hiding in the city? We put you there for a reason. Yeah, it is time. Yeah, time to rise up, oh. Um, I think what sets me apart is a lot of research and then try to go away from the normal process or procedure that people use. For instance, if you look at my stammering, people will stammer and they will, eh, 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 I want to. And I'm like, okay, look at, if you really do a lot of research, you see that there are a lot of stammerers. There are some that they will talk and then they will close their eyes. Others will also hate themselves. Others will also go like, oh, me pen in term, give it to me. So I was like, okay, let me pick the fast paced one. Because definitely a lot of people are following the same trend, the one that they will hit themselves and they will keep long before they'll talk. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll talk fast, I'll stammer, and then I'll, mine will be a bit different. General Intatia's creative jokes delivered in his stammering tone has got tongues wagging. While many admire his style, others are of the opinion he makes mockery of stammerers. Rather, the comic character thinks he's been a major source of inspiration. Yeah. All right, so how is General Intatia encouraging stammerers via your craft? <laughs> Well, I think ever since I picked up this character, I've met with three stammerers. I tell them that when you're coming to talk, taking a deep breath. And I also learned something from Steve Harvey. Okay. Yeah, so the process that you use in getting people to come out from their stammering, I've been telling people, Charlie, taking a deep breath, when you're coming to just slow down. When you slow down, you'll be able to pick your words and then you talk normally and then things will pick up. So I'm in a way trying to, you know, motivate. If I see them, some of them think that I'm, I'm a, a real stammerer. Mm -hmm. So they come in like, hey, so you're not a stammerer, you, you, you'll be more, 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 more can I say. I'm like, oh, Charlie, guy, that's, that's the character. It's just a role that I play. Please, shall we pray? And there you have him, General Antatia is not a stammerer. My name is Nana Quadrado. There's more news on 3news.com. Don't forget, I'm black and proud. Well, how the rest of the team will say thank you. My name is Alfred Okanse, and I am black and proud. And I'm Natalie Ford. Thanks so much for watching. I'm black and proud. Have a great evening.